a good hour for romance as Jay Yi and Du Jin take a break from all the suffering to go on a date that's been 12 years in the making. But don't let the cuteness fool you. Blood is still spilled this week. Some of it is even kinda satisfying. It makes you wonder if there isn't a tiny bit of Yoon Hee Jae hidden in your heart. Episodes 19 to 20 WEECAP We open in the aftermath of Park Hee Young's report. Mu Won reads the headlines linking Da Jin to his sister and tries but fails to contact Da Jin. He looks at Hyun Mu's defaced Jae Yi posters again and chucks them across the room in frustration. Da Jin can't come to the phone because he's busy listening to Jae Yi's proposal. The one where she wants them to stop being sorry for the past and try chasing their own happiness for once. Thinking of how Dad and Hyun Mu almost killed her the two times they've been together, he turns down her offer, scared that being with her will hurt her even more. Meanwhile, Lee Sung Woo, previously called fanboy, introduces himself to Hyun Mu by attacking a drunk guy for him. Sung Woo giggles when Hyun Mu recognizes him as one of the staff members working around Jae Yi. He happily shares how he took over killing people when it was obvious Hyun Mu couldn't, bragging that Dad trusted him with the task instead of Hyun Mu. In a flashback, we see Sung Woo meeting Dad in prison during Bible study. I really need to have words with that nun one of these days, if she's still alive, Dad took a liking to the eager apprentice who reminded him of Namu. He taught him how to use a hammer and presumably told him stories about the family. In return, Sung Woo promised to do some things for Dad when he's released from prison. Storytime is interrupted when the drunk Ajashi struggles to get up. Sung Woo laughs to find him alive and hits him once more, shocking Hyun Moo with the casualness of the murder. Sung Woo sounds like a delusional fanboy as he inserts himself in the family tree, calling Yoon Hee Jae father and telling his big brother that he already met Mom and his cute little sister So Jin. Hyun Moo starts toward him at the mention of So Jin's name, but Sung Woo swings the hammer, spraying Hyun Moo with the now dead Ajashi's blood before saying goodbye. Hyun Moo shakes at the sight of the stranger's blood and stumbles out of there. Da Jin doesn't last one night before he's ripping out his IV and escaping to Jae Yi's hotel. He takes back his answer and offers to spend one day just with her, something they couldn't do for the past 12 years. Jae Yi agrees and they hug on it, probably the first hug that isn't prompted by murderers of the nosy media. Watch the video Let's Have One Day Speaking of nosy media, Park Hee Young sets her team to digging dirt on Da Jin, teaching her evil minions how news of the good-looking son dating one of his family's victims can generate two weeks' worth of content. When she reads news of Yoon Hee Jae getting 30 days of solitary confinement for attacking a guard, she easily figures out that the outburst was triggered by her documentary, making me wonder if she'd make a good prosecutor too, having a criminal's mind and all. Jae Yi's manager is busy minimizing the damage the rumors are doing to her image but she's floating on cloud nine with Da Jin's promised date and calmly accepts the penalties. The source of her happiness is patiently recovering in the hospital, being pampered by his cop buddy Jong Hyun. In between cutting apples into hearts, Jong Hyun informs Da Jin that he's been taken off both Jae Yi's and the hammer attack cases since there's now concrete evidence of both being linked to Hyun Mu. Jong Hyun saves him from a guilt trip by saying that he might not have known Yoon Namu, but he would have befriended and stayed friends with him back then. Which we all know is a death sentence. But it's a sweet thought. In an annoying segue, the cop Sunday that Da Jin saved is revealed to be one of Park Hee Young's sources. He complains that Park hasn't revealed Da Jin's face to the public yet and even Park has to wonder why he's being too mean to the nice Da Jin. The Sunbae just shrugs that Dajin's the son of a murderer, as if he doesn't count as a person anymore. I'm now retroactively glad this guy was stabbed. Mu Won gets a call from a U family representative. He addresses the other person as father and assures him that the articles on Jae Yi are fake and he'll sue everyone into silence. After the call, he's assaulted by more memories from his parents' murder. A young Mu Won was left for dead on the floor as the killer dropped the weapon and poured gasoline on the bodies. The killer jerked in surprise and turned around at a stabbing sound, which is where the memory ends. In the present, Mu Won shakes the recollection away to visit Jae Yi. He warns her to avoid their family for a while as they're eager to scold her for what's happening. She wonders why he won't pressure her to talk like everybody else, and he smiles sadly as he promises to protect her and wait for her to be ready, just like how their mom and dad waited for him. 
Alarmed by the thought of their new foster brother hanging around, Hyunmu watches So Jin leave work, following her until she safely gets on the bus home. He also checks on Mom's shop where Mom alternates between sitting dejectedly and running out to chase anyone dressed up like Hyun Mu. I don't know how he stops himself from running over and hugging them when he looks that lonesome. Just like that, we jump to a month later, at the end of Dad's solitary confinement. His first visitor is Park Hee Young. She's a bit miffed that she can't find any dirt on Namu. Dad is still mad at her for telling the public that the police exaggerated his crimes to make his arrest look like a huge achievement. Puck isn't the least bit sorry for the lie since she's the one who made Dad into this celebrity criminal when he'd otherwise be treated as common trash. Dad thinks it's the other way around, his story is what shot her into fame when otherwise should be writing trashy gossip. Puck gets bored with the chicken or the killer egg debate. She's just here to pick his brain about Namu and what happened that night. Dad is unwilling to talk, furious that she's not the least bit scared of him. Park shelves the interview for another time and stands up to leave. But not before leaning in, yikes, and whispering that he should accept that his era is over, his only role now is to rot in jail. Watch the video your era is over Dad takes that as an invitation to strangle her. It takes three guards to finally pull him off. Not for nothing is Park the craziest lady in the business when she amusedly tells him that she'll sue him for this attack so they can make headlines again, guessing that that's what Dad really wanted anyway. But is it? Because Dad sounds just as amused when he tells her, goodbye, rep